On June 7, 2021, Maggie and Paul Murdoch were shot and killed on their family's property. Maggie was shot with a rifle and Paul was killed by a shotgun blast to his head. It was a brutal crime scene. Alec Murdoch, Maggie's husband and Paul's father, was the one who called 911 from the scene. At the time, Alec was a powerful attorney born into a family of privilege and influence in the low country of South Carolina. But within months, things would change drastically for Alec. The investigation uncovered some of Alec's dark secrets connected to a series of financial crimes. He was accused of swindling clients and stealing from his law firm. Then things got even worse for Alec as he was arrested and charged with murdering his wife and son. Tonight, we are live from the Low Country with all the big moments from inside the courtroom as prosecutors try to prove that Alec Murdoch murdered his wife and son. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And I always say this about trials, especially big ones like this. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. And each day gets bigger and bigger. Each day gets more and more important as prosecutors try to prove their case beyond any and all reasonable doubt. The prosecutors are gonna have some trouble with their snowball in this case. Not because it's warm down in South Carolina, it's actually a little chilly down there tonight, but because of some of the evidence that they don't have and, and can't necessarily provide to this jury. And it begins with uh, murder weapons. There'll be no murder weapons uh, presented in this case. You know, that's always a dramatic moment inside the courtroom when the jury sees the murder weapon, the gun, the knife, whatever was used to take the life that they are accusing uh, the defendant of taking. And it's, it's I, I can't explain unless you've been in the courtroom for it. You know, when the prosecutor brings out that murder weapon and, and you think about it and, and how significant and how important um, that evidence is and what it's like for the jury of 12 ordinary people to look at, oh my goodness, that's, that's the gun that did it. That moment's not gonna happen in this trial. It's not, they've seen guns, but none of them are the murder weapons. And there's two different weapons. There's a shotgun and a rifle that are, that are gone and missing. And you can understand why they're gone and missing. A killer is not necessarily gonna leave them laying around but a lot of times, in a lot of trials, we do have a murder weapon. So what do we have in this case? Well, we've got prosecutors trying to, trying to, trying to build something to make it look like Alec, had a, Alec Murdoch had a murder weapon in his hands. And we go back, and there's one significant date. It's a few days after the murder when Alec Murdoch goes to visit his mother's house in Almeida. Okay, it's about 18 minutes away from his main home. And... Um, he went there like 6.30 in the morning, which was kind of strange. I mean, it's very early. So he's up early, not the normal time that he would necessarily go there, but he makes this early morning visit and he's holding something in his hand. And Shelly Smith, who's the caregiver for his mother who lives there, who has dementia, um, she testified about seeing a blue tarp or something in his hands. And, and from my perspective, she kept coming back to the tarp, the tarp, the tarp. But it was, you know, something that he carried in at 6.30 in the morning. Strange. Like, what are you bringing in? Why are you bringing it? There's no real conversation about it. And is it wrapped around something? Is there something beneath this tarp? Um, we don't know. We don't know. She wasn't able to answer that question. So that's another problem for prosecutors. So they're trying... They're trying to, to convince this jury that maybe it's not a tarp. Even though their witness said it's a tarp. Maybe it's not a tarp. Maybe it's a raincoat, a blue raincoat, which might look like a tarp. Has some tarp-like qualities. I mean, that's where prosecutors are going with this. They're trying to create, you know, and, and one thing that we know is that the most unreliable evidence in a trial is eyewitness memory. It's, it's just not reliable. It's been proven time and time again that you can get things wrong. I mean, most of us have had those moments in our life where, oh yeah, I saw something and you remember seeing something, but you didn't actually see what you thought you saw. Well, that's kind of what prosecutors are doing with their own witness here, Shelley Smith, trying to say that maybe it was a raincoat. 
Maybe it was this blue raincoat that looks like a blue tarp that's really big, and when you lay it out, it, it has some tarp-like appearance to it. Amazing. I mean, again, you don't have the murder weapons, but you're trying to use this raincoat to put a murder weapon in Alec Murdoch's hands, right? When he's carrying that, that, that blue tarp-like thing into the house. I want you to take a listen. The reason this is so significant on whether or not we're talking about a blue raincoat or a blue tarp is because the testimony of Megan Fletcher, uh, she works for, for SLED, which is the investigatory uh, body down there in South Carolina, um, talking about her examination, not of the tarp, but of the blue raincoat that has some tarp-like qualities to it, but it had something else on it. Take a listen. There were 13 particle lifts collected from the exterior of the jacket, and I did find particles characteristic of gunshot primer residue on it. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that that jacket could have been in the vicinity to the discharge of a firearm or something that had gunshot residue on it could have transferred to that object. I can't tell you when that happened or how it happened. Yes, we turned it inside out and also collected samples from the inside. W was there a lot of gunshot primer residue inside the inside of the jacket? I would say there were a significant, no significant number of particles uh, of particles characteristic of gunshot primer residue on the inside of this jacket, yes. How many did you determine? I'd, I confirmed 38 particles characteristic. Given that it's on the inside, uh, in order for it to be uh, consistent with transfer, an object or objects with a high amount of gunshot primer residue on it would have had to transfer to it. Um, so they would have had to have more gunshot primer residue particles on them to begin with in order to transfer the amount of gunshot primer residue I found on this coat. And, and as far as a recently fired firearm, would your, would your findings be consistent with that item containing a recently fired firearm? Uh, it is possible, yes. With that number of firearms? Uh, with that number, it is possible. Is there any other possibility? Uh, you if, stated one. Are there any more? Uh, if the jacket was inside out and simply in the vicinity to the discharge of a firearm, it could have also had that number of particles on it. GSR, gunshot residue on this blue raincoat. Blue raincoat has gunshot residue. You know, every big trial I've ever covered, there's always like a, a piece of evidence that we remember forever. In this case, I think it's going to be the blue raincoat slash blue tarp. You know, kind of like the gas cans from a couple other trials that we covered. All right, so let's bring in, get some more context for all this. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter joins us live tonight outside that courthouse in Walterboro, South Carolina. Of course, she was inside the courtroom today. Chanley, great to see you. Um, okay, this is the GSR expert. She's finding particles on this blue raincoat. What else did the GSR expert find? Yeah, she found copious amounts of gunshot residue on the blue raincoat, but that wasn't all that she tested. The jury heard about other items, including the clothing that Alec Murdoch was wearing when police arrived to the crime scene June 7th, 2021. She talks about how in her lab uh, at SLED, they can put the articles of clothing under this big microscope to find different particles, and small particles were found on his clothing. Uh, the shirt he was wearing wearing the shorts he was wearing on his hands but not on those tennis shoes that I showed you last night those Nike tennis shoes no gunshot residue on that she also tested the seat belt that was in the Chevy Suburban uh, Alec Murdoch was driving the night of the murders and the seat belt buckle there's a photo of it had small particles of gunshot residue on that as well so she can say of course uh, that there's particles but she can't say how they got there Vinny or when the gunshot residue got there was it because this item was in the vicinity of a firearm being shot or was it something that was transferred onto that particular item this gets so tricky for both sides this gets really tricky between the blood lack of blood the uh, fresh scent, but it's got particles on it. Um, no gun has been found, but he had a shotgun when they showed up. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Where did they find the raincoat and did they find the tarp that, because again, I'm confused here. I'm really confused. <laughs> My job is not to be confused. Uh, I wonder if the jurors are as confused if you're about confused, raincoat. The jury is yeah, raincoat confused. and tarp. Yeah. What is what and what's found yes. where? And what made it even more confusing, Vinny, is that inside the courtroom, the defense brought its own tarp from Kmart and unwrapped it. It had nothing to do <laughs> with what was found in the mother's home, in Alec Murdoch's mother's home, but they did enter this, you know, Kmart tarp into evidence. It's a defendant's exhibit. But inside the home of the mother. Remember, Shelly Smith told an officer in an unrelated jurisdiction about this suspicious activity of Alec Murdoch in September at following a car accident that she was in just in regular conversation. She brought it up. That led to the search of the mother's home uh, in September where they did uncover not only a blue tarp, but a blue raincoat. Let's watch. That is the blue tarp that we located inside the bedroom in the north, inside the closet inside the bedroom. Okay. And um, what was that tarp located in? A storage container. Were there any items in the storage container? There were miscellaneous dishes underneath the tarp. Um, after you found the tarp, did you continue searching the residence? Yes, ma'am, we did. Okay. And what else did you find? We located a blue raincoat in the coat closet on the second floor. So in a storage container, they found a blue tarp and a blue raincoat kind of stuffed. We've all seen the photo stuffed um, in a coat closet. Well, on cross-examination, as you can imagine, she was asked about what was tested and what wasn't tested. Let's watch. You went to Almeida Ms. Libby Murdoch's home to execute a search warrant, is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. And what was the day? September? September 16th, 2021. September 16th, 2021. And you were looking for a blue tarp? We were advised that we were searching for a blue tarp-like material. Okay, and you found a blue tarp, is that right? Yes, sir. And in that blue tarp, there were dishes wrapped up in that blue tarp, right? No, sir. No dishes were wrapped in the blue tarp. It was folded on top of the dishes. Okay. So you seized the blue tarp, right? Yes, sir. And did you do any um, testing of the blue tarp to see if there was blood? No, sir. I did not do any testing on the blue tarp. Do you know anyone who did any blue testing on the blue tarp? I am unaware of any testing done on the blue tarp. Vinny, even though they found a blue tarp in the home, which I want to show on the screen because it's blue on one side and silver on the other side. I don't recall Shelly Smith talking about it being multicolored, but that's the tarp they found in the home. It wasn't even tested, though, and that seemed to make some waves inside the courtroom. Why would they test one object and not both objects just in case, right? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Why would it hurt? I mean, you went there looking for a blue tarp. You found a blue tarp. You didn't test it. You found a raincoat, but you tested that. I, 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 I get testing the raincoat because it's got some tarp-like qualities, but how about testing the thing that is actually a tarp, right? Because they were looking for a blue tarp because Shelly Smith said she saw, I mean, it hurt her in the courtroom, too. She said she saw Alec Murdoch carrying a blue tarp. She did. So on direct, it was a blue something in his hands. Well, on cross-examination, the defense gets a little more specific. What was this blue something? And she was adamant. It was a tarp. Let's watch. Now, you saw Mr. Alec Murdoch bring a tarp in, you said, right? Yes. And I'm going to show you a tarp. which we marked for identification purpose. This is your honor, exhibit 86. Is this the type of tarp that Mr. Murdoch came in to the Alameda house on the day that we're talking about? Yes. Tarp like this that would 
maybe cover up a car. Is that right? Yes. Any way to confuse this with a rain jacket? No. He was not carrying a rain jacket, was he? No, it was balled up. I don't know him. There's the tarp that the defense brought out on cross-examination, and she was adamant it was a tarp. However, in the photo that we do have of where this blue raincoat, or it's more like a poncho, it is a big <laughs> raincoat, Vinny, uh, they do show her a picture of what it looked like in the closet, and she says, yes, that could be, that is similar to what I saw him carry in right there. So that's how they're connecting her with the actual raincoat. Yeah, I think they should be using the term poncho. I think Poncho just yeah. screams tarp much more than a raincoat would, but that's that's so that's the that's the raincoat slash poncho. That's not the tarp there. That is the raincoat poncho, possibly confused as a tarp. Okay, <laughs> let's bring in our guests joining the conversation in Charlotte, North Carolina. Host of the Murdoch podcast, Impact of Influence, Matt Harris is with us. And in Monroe, North Carolina, death investigator, forensic chronologist, Dr. Laura Petler is with us. All right, Matt, was it raining the night of the murders? Yes. It, yes, was. it was. a drizzle off and on throughout the night, yes. That's great to know. So raincoat, yeah. poncho might make some sense in all of this. Very possible, yes, very possible. I mean, you, you've uh, prosecuted a lot of criminals who are stupid. So just because you're stupid doesn't mean you didn't do it. So the idea that he would hide the poncho at his mom's house is so ridiculous. There's a million places that he could have gotten rid of that poncho. Uh, you've seen the amount of nothingness that's out there, the spread, the waterways. The, the You could throw it in a Goodwill box for that matter. I don't know why he would insist on holding on to that poncho. but. Like we said, not every murderer is doing the, the, their best uh, way to absolve them of that murder, but just ridiculous that he would leave it there. Dr. Laura Petler, how about the gunshot residue here? What is it, is it telling us a story tonight? You know, Vinny, gunshot residue for me is one of those types of evidence you have to be extremely careful with for all of the reasons they were talking about today on the stand. The experts were explaining that it can be transferred if, if you know, under various circumstances. So it's one of those types of evidence that a lot of people do not use anymore. There's research that has been uh, questionable where it's it's called into question the science at some level and so there are agencies around the country today that do not use GSR and do not test anything uh, related to GSR secondly that's important to know about GSR the substrate or the material that you are testing is also very important. And the ballistics experts I've worked with over the past 20 some years working in homicide, one of the things they've always told me is make sure you seal the item you're going to test very quickly and get it to the lab as fast as possible because this type of evidence, what they're talking about GSR often degrades and it's it's something that happens quicker than maybe other types of evidence. And so they've always advised us to get an item that's gonna be tested for GSR to the lab sealed very quickly. One of the experts even explained, put it in a, a clean paint can and seal it like that because a lot of times this types of evidence is maybe absorbed into the material or falls off the material. I'm not an expert in GSR, but that's what they've told me over the past 22 years that I've been doing this. And I'll tell you, but the, the gunshot residue, I think, resonates with the jury because it's kind of like something they understand. All right, you shoot a gun, you're gonna get some, you're gonna get something on you. That's it's fascinating. All right, uh, Dr. Laura Petler, Matt Harris staying with us the whole hour. Chanley Painter with us down there in the Low Country. When we come back, let's talk about Alec Murdoch's uh, potential motive.